It's been a very wet summer, especially for those areas across the central and eastern two-thirds of the U.S. Let's take a look at the overall precipitation anomalies for the last 60 days. Now, out west, it's been nothing but dry. You can definitely see much of California is kind of begging for rain out there and even into Nevada. And even for the Pacific Northwest, I mean, it's definitely has been on the drier side comparably what you're kind of used to this time of year. But most of the central and eastern two thirds of the U.S. has been increasingly wet with system after system. In fact, even for the year, we've seen over 4,000 flash flood warnings issued by the National Weather Service. And of course, we had that devastating flooding down there in central Texas. But we've also had abundance amount of just rains that just kind of sit and sits there over an, an extended period of time with this high water vapor content that has been in the atmosphere has produced flash flooding and then areas like into iowa where they've seen excessive corn sweat that's actually increasing the dew points and elevating more water vapor in the atmosphere which of course elevates heavier rains for them as well but we've also seen tropical lows have been kind of sitting along the coastline as well producing some very heavy rain and just kind of been relentless one after another now if we take a look at the last two weeks as far as temperature anomalies you can really feel of where the cooler air has been and that's been on the predominantly where the it's been overall kind of on the wetter side across the central U.S. Most of the far west coast, like areas into San Francisco, they're experiencing one of their coldest summers on record. But it's been slightly above average for most, most of the west outside of there. And then, of course, most of the Ohio Valley into the southeast, but especially up there across the mid-Atlantic and into the northeast. But if we take you out in the tropics and if we look at the overall sea surface anomalies, we've been in this Enzo neutral. We haven't really been in a El Nino or a La Nina. Remember, we transitioned out of a week La Nina back in that March time frame. So we've been sitting close to neutral for the last four or five months, but we're actually seeing a at least the beginning stages of a transition going in back into a weak La Nina as we head into the fall months. And if you look at the overall equatorial Pacific, there's a lot more blue showing up on the map. That means those cooler waters are getting cooler and that active subtropical jet stream is not going to be as active, but it's also been fairly quiet out there into the Atlantic as well. And there's been a lot of Sahara dust and even in the main development region where we really haven't seen anything is really because these temperatures have definitely been on the much cooler side, not just in the MDR region, but also into the Caribbean as well. But that trend is slowly changing. So if we look at the overall trend over the last couple of months here, you see where we are right now. To be in Enzo neutral criteria, you've got to be between plus five and minus five Celsius out there in the Equatorial Pacific. But you can see the trend since July the 10th. It's been a noticeably difference of a drastic downturn of those colder waters going back into the equatorial pacific and now it's actually past that 0.5 range but we actually need to be there for an average over three months to basically qualify back into a weak la nina and that's where the standards lie but for the climate prediction center you essentially have to have three consecutive months of some of those temperatures kind of where we are now below that minus five criteria criteria for Celsius to reach that weak La Nina criteria status, that would put us into October. So the trend it looks likely we go back into a weak La Nina like we were that last year, last winter, we have a similar kind of dynamic starting to take shape as we transition likely back into that weak La Nina. And the trend hasn't even picked up on that latest downfall in the last two weeks, but still puts us predominantly um, favoring at least for a short period of time back into that La Nina criteria as we transfer into that October time frame and I think we're there for most of fall and most of winter and then all indications that we likely might trend back into that Enzo neutral criteria as we head into
to the spring months of 2026. So here's where we stand right now as far as out there into the Atlantic on the bigger picture. So all those colder waters, the Saharan dust, it's high and dry out there into the main development region. There's these pesky lows we've been talking about. We had Invest 93L that really never came to fruition. And then a piece of it's coming back around again right now. And now it's producing, again, heavier rains, tropical downpours, at least along the coastal areas. And then we'll see another one likely impacting making landfall tomorrow somewhere in Texas along the southeast coast there and producing some heavier rains as lighter amounts will try to squeeze further inland. We'll have the monsoonal flow continue, but the ridge is alive and prevalent across much of the Southern Plains into the Southeast. That's why we're seeing so those loop around, if you will, some of those you know tropical lows. And of course the ridge, the stuff has to form up and over the ridge. And that's where you've been seeing all the heavier rains and the higher dew points and yes that is more rain complements to that corn sweat out there in iowa producing more showers and thunderstorms with it's just been crazy insane dew points lately i saw a print just yesterday that somewhere they topped out in northwest missouri around 88 dew point which made the heat into see 128 degrees it's been stifling out there in the corn belt region and you're not really probably going to get any reprieve anytime soon but if we take a look what's what's to come kind of the longer range bigger picture i do feel the tropics are still going to continue to remain on the quiet side we've only had three named storms and those have been really all short-lived producers actually all within just after 24 hours of coming to be a named storm it, it made landfall or dissipated I do feel because we've got an abundance amount of sinking air over the Atlantic for the next two weeks I think it continues to remain on the overall drier side and not too many storms come into fruition and if we take you extended even further than that because I still feel like we're still going to be in that end zone neutral type stage that we still continue on the lighter side little next to nothing on the tropics really not expecting much of anything really for the next four to six weeks down there into the tropics through almost Labor Day as again much of the Atlantic is down there into the Caribbean are seeing some of that sinking air so the only thing we have to really look for is maybe in close development right across right inland where we kind of been seeing it with these little tropical lows hugging the coast a lot of times they've they've kind of come you know coming around too fast they don't really have time to develop and what is going to develop is this dominating ridge at least for the next week over a good part of the southeast and much of the southern plains are likely get, seeing their hottest temperatures of the season at least so far as that ridge of high pressure just builds and kind of expands over a good part of the south so anything that rains has to go up and over the top of this ridge for the next uh, seven days but beyond that we might see a little bit of a temporary reprieve somewhere in the vicinity of that august 2nd time frame we do see a middle mini little cold front that's likely going to be producing some below average temperatures at least for a short period of time replacing and eating away of that ridge just a little bit giving those areas a little bit of a reprieve of that excessive heat that you're going to be getting over the next week time frame and then beyond that for the next 15 days that drier period likely down there in texas and oklahoma where they had a lot of rain but it's been dry the last 10 days i think it continues to remain on the overall below average drier than normal side we'll still see these low pressure centers that kind of wrap around that ridge likely getting putting the heaviest rains across the gulf coast states especially there into Louisiana and then we'll have the monsoonal flow likely to continue as well into New Mexico and areas of Colorado and then where the ridge isn't where you see the weakness of the ridge and there it is Iowa again yes that that corn sweat is doing a number on your weather actually releasing all that abundance amount of more extra water vapor imagery in the atmosphere and 
that's why you're seeing these higher water content values when it's able to squeeze out the atmosphere and produce showers and thunderstorms and a lot of a lot of that it gets excessively heavy at times and i do feel that is going to continue for the foreseeable future but overall if we look at the latest drought update that just updated on the 17th of the month yeah unfortunately most of the western regions most of the pacific northwest most of the southwest and you know the west coast is continuing to remain drought conditions do persist and i do feel as we transition back into that la nina we're going to be starting to see more of the at least the central u.s starting to get deeper into a drier period i know it's been wet as of late but even a flash drought maybe not out be out of the cards of the realm of possibility after you got a lot of heat really starting to build and now then even drought conditions will slowly start to increase and start to build in and i do feel as we get as as we head into those fall months that la nina will start to kick in and a lot of times that does mean drier than average weather and well you know above average conditions as far as temperatures goes as well and that's the transition like we were going to be seeing we are expecting a hot august and we are expecting that transition deeper go, going closer to that la nina criteria seeing a hot september as well and so you know a lot of areas especially well you'll see the big difference is especially across the middle part of the country where it has been predominantly on the or more or less milder side which you're comparably used to i think that transition to above average is going to be in the cards and i think it gets deeper not just in august but especially there into september and if we add it all up as well I think you'll continue to remain on the the drier side as well as the drier period starts starts as you know getting closer as of right now and I do feel the drier period will likely start to take shape you know in the second half of August but especially as we head into September as as the the you know getting into that week La Nina criteria becomes closer in range and if we expand it even further than that and pick up the August September and October time frame over the, those next three months as I feel like we will transition into a La Nina we'll definitely start to see that heat even build even further at least the above average temperature anomaly so i do feel it extends well getting into those fall criteria as we'll start to see the tropics start to light up so to sum it all up i do feel we'll continue to remain on the overall milder side out there into the tropics not much action to speak of at least through labor day and as we transition out of labor day and especially heading into that october time frame i think the tables turn big time and we'll start to see very active development start to take shape so overall it still will be an average to a slightly above average season but i do feel it's going to be on the later side as much of the u.s will likely be on the drier side across the middle part of the country but well above average temperatures for those three months of august september and in october so guys i appreciate you watching do like this video definitely hit the subscribe button and catch the next update wire protect you before and after the storm